This is about Isabel Gowdy, who was a 17th century woman accused of witchcraft in Scotland. In four separate confessions made apparently without torture, between April 13 and May 27, 1662, Isabel Gowdy gave what amounted to a resume of popular beliefs about witchcraft in Scotland. The woman appeared clearly demented, although by her statements it's plain she believed what she confessed, no matter how impossible, such as turning herself into a jackdaw or a cat and flying through the air to the Sabbath. Her imagination was as powerful as Zola's, Robbins writes, who was a professor of English, by the way, at SUNY Albany. Her personal history as a witch went back to 1647, when she met the devil in the church at Aldern, Scotland. Here she made a pact denying Christian baptism, receiving the new name of Janet, the devil's mark on her shoulder, and rebaptism in her own blood, which the devil sucked from her. That's beginning to sound like an episode of True Blood. She swore allegiance by placing one hand on her head and the other on the sole of her foot. The ceremony concluded with the devil, just like the minister, reading from the pulpit. Isabel confessed how a broomstick or stool left in bed would delude her husband whenever she left for the Sabbath. Yeah, that's really going to work, right? Uh, she rode on any bit of straw, crying horse and haddock in the devil's name, while aloft in the air she could shoot down any Christian who saw her and did not bless himself. From her ravings comes the most direct evidence for the idea of a coven of thirteen witches. Each witch had her own special devil, going by names as curious as those ascribed to witches' familiars. Swain, Rory, Roaring Lion, Robert the Rule, or Red Reaver. The group or coven spent its time raising storms by hitting a stone with a wet rag and reciting a charm which Isabel faithfully recited for the judges. I knock this rag upon this stain to raise the wind in the devil's name. It shall not lie until I please again. At other times, the witches would change themselves into animals by repeating another charm, or they would shoot elf arrows, which Isabel had seen little elf boys sharpening to injure or kill people. Now it seems like she's starting to channel the Lord of the Rings. Occasionally they missed their target and the devil would be very angry. The devil kept strict control over his witches, said Isabel, and beat them from time to time. Now, the court records do not give Isabel Gowdy's fate, but there seems no reason that she was not executed, although it's really interesting that this occurred in 1647, which was right during the English Civil War in Scotland, okay? And there was a battle in her hometown of Aldern in, two years earlier in which the Royalists won. When she was executed, or maybe at least her trial took place in 1662, it was during the Restoration. Now, the author, Russell Hope Robbins, has a little bit of suspicion about what went on in his last sentence here. It is noteworthy that while the Restoration in England brought a reduction of witch trials, the first years of Charles II marked a high point in the number of prosecutions in Scotland. So it's quite possible that all her ravings were just a, um, a mask for her, for her actual anti-royalist activities, and she felt it would be easier for her to portray herself as a witch rather than take a, a turn at the treason. That's it. Russell Hope Robbins.